Right, and we're back, beautiful people. Good afternoon once again. And uh, since it's uh, 1700 hours CET, it's time for the live trading with my uh, good colleague from uh, Cape Town, South Africa, Tyron Schultz. Right, Tyron, very good afternoon to you. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Andrew. I'm all in the south. Good, good, good. Did you see the, the crude oil uh, today, uh, Tyron? Unfortunately, I didn't have a look at the crude oil. I was mostly focused on my currency piece that I analyzed yesterday. Oh, boy. When yeah. did you start trading, uh, Tyron? I started trading in 2017. I didn't trade. I, I was just interested in 2017. It wasn't, it wasn't that popular in South Africa back then. Um, there was only a few guys, and I didn't have the money to learn, but I was like everyone else, go on the internet, go on YouTube, go read stuff, you know, but I always, I always looked at people that already been making money in the industry, you know, and I could see that, you know, if, 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 if it can work for them, it can definitely work for me. So, yeah, so ever since, my goal was always to evolve as a trader. So my, my mindset is not a lot on the money aspect, but it's always to understand how the industry work, you know, the different role players and how I can get better. For instance, if, if, if someone goes to university to go and study to become a teacher, they don't focus on the money or the salary. The same with a lawyer or doctor. They always focus on the function they need to do, you know, and how to get better at what they are doing. So that is our look when it comes to trading. It depends. It yeah, depends. It, it depends, yeah. <laughs> so that's the only way I look at it, you know. How can I become better? How can I take better entries? How can I manage my trade better? How can I be more effective, you know? I want to spend less time on the chart, maybe multiply my money more, stuff like that, you know. And mm -hmm. how can I use less capital to make more profit? To me, that is that is part of your risk management. So yeah. And are you trading full time? Do you also have a day job? Because I know you have your own company, yeah, your own firm. Is that all you do? So basically, your income comes from trading part of it, and then from your side business. Hundred percent. So say ninety percent of my income comes from trading. Uh, no way. Is, eh? No way. Yeah, I swear, to, I swear to God, sorry. But 90% of my income comes uh, from trading. You know, I always tell people, trading is like any job. There's nothing special. But uh, it's the false marketing that makes it difficult for people to adapt that type of thinking. To me, I want to live comfortable. I want to have money to buy whatever I need, whenever I want it. But I also want to live in a nice environment, nice suburb. So to me, if I get that basics right, I'll make sure that I, I don't I don't trade every day. So then I don't have that pressure of, you know, I need to make 50,000, I need to make 10,000. So I wait for proper setups, I take proper setups, I take my trades, I take my losses. So yeah, I depend on trading 90%. And ever since I, I became a full-time trader, Andrew, a lot of my students started adapting the same thing. So a lot of them are leaving their jobs because they've been doing it uh, right as well. Do you understand? I always, I, I always have the same plan your exit you can be in a job today but if you take on trading you need to be intentional when it comes to growing in this industry you can't just do a course and expect things to happen you need to basically plan your whole life around exiting whatever you're doing now because moving into into the trading is very risky today you might make a lot of money tomorrow you might hit multiple losses sometime it will last for a month two months three months four months so what you need to do is whenever you trade Take your money, put it into other things that can give you more slower returns, but more stable. Yes. And that will make it comfortable for you to trade because now you can focus on just taking trades and not focus on, I need to make this amount or that amount. So that's very important. Yeah, that's very well said. But the thing is, I mean, I understand you made it. Yeah, you, you make your money from trading. 90% of your income, let's say, comes from trading. But can other people do it as well? People without the the starting capital let's say that you had people without uh, the knowledge that uh, that you have because and i'll tell you why if this is a phenomenon yeah that that goes uh, countrywide okay if you have a nine to five job you pay taxes yeah but if what happens if we all start making money on the side yeah and we we start av avoiding those uh, those things can the economy survive? Because then if millions of people will do this, and this is why the regulators were against cryptocurrencies so much. Okay. And I know they got a lot of hate, including from me. Yeah. <laughs> but 
uh, the average person yeah, um, did not fully understand what's happening behind someone um, avoiding yeah, to pay some, uh, some taxes. You might have, let's say in a country of 20 million people, what happens if 10 million all trade cryptos, no one works, then you have another 5 million trading Forex, yeah, making their money, no one works, and you have 5 million working. Who's going to sustain the economy? That's you know, true. this is That's this true. is the downside. What do you do when you have big losses? How do you have big, big losses? Have you ever had uh, big losses? I uh, recently had a big loss, a very big loss. <laughs> yeah, I always okay. laugh about it because I just had to go. But let, let me say this. I funded an account, right, with about 20000 I grew the account to over 140000 in the span of two weeks. So... My goal was to say, okay, cool. If I can do 10 to 140,000, I can definitely do 140,000 to a million. But that was ego, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I, I, had to, I, I just had to withdraw my money. But I, I had a lot of ego because to me, it's like, you know, if I could do this, took eight trades, only lost one, one at break even. Come on, let, let, let's just do this thing, you know. You know, now you start having this all this imaginary uh, goals and dreams. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw a million. I'm gonna do this, take holiday for a month. You know, and it didn't play, happen that way. I actually have a screenshot, so I think on the next show I'll show it. You know, and to me that was a very 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 good learning experience because when I saw I'm hundred thousand down, I'm like, Yo, I only have forty thousand equity left, and I was like. <sighs> Yeah, I started praying as like, God, I, I won't do this again, man. Just save my account. And it didn't happen that way. And I blew the whole 140000 I was angry for, for, for a few minutes. And I just had to step up and say, you know what? Take ownership. Number one, you were greedy. Number two, you, you were hitting the lot sizes. You were scaling into trades to, to, to this particular trade that wasn't running profitable. You weren't uh, following your, your trading plan. What happened to taking withdrawals at certain stages of, of the account? Yeah. So there was a lot of things that I violated before I even got to the blowing of the account, you know? So, yeah, I took 140,000. That's almost about 11,000 USD lost in one day on GPP, JPY, you know? But I'm with you. I know I, the feeling. So I learned <laughs> from that. I always learn, you know? And that's why I always journal, take before and afters of my trades. I always think, uh, look at the state of mind I'm in whenever I take trades because it's super important. You can't feel uh, tired or not motivated or not feel like you want to trade and you go and, and hit so, 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 so much lots. I think I, 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 went, I went in about 20 lots, 25 lots, you know? So that, 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 that hurt me a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so but when it comes to capital and to new traders, one thing people need to understand, and I always tell, to my, tell that to my students, is that when I started, I didn't have capital. Because I grew up like all poor people grew up in South Africa. You know? So I didn't have a lot of capital, but I always had this vision of me doing this thing full time, which is called Forex, because I could see like, you know, people are clocking in a thousand dollars, you know, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars a day. I'm like, you know what, we're all human. If they can do it, I can do it. You know, so I was also doing ten dollars, five dollars. $20, $30 a day. But while I was doing that, my skill set became better. And I resigned from my job with no guarantees and I went full time in this thing. And that's a risk I took. You know, luckily to me, it paid off. You know, but on my journey, one of my friends, he actually invested in me as a person. So I was lucky in that regard because he gave me a hundred thousand and he said to me, you know what, go out there and go make money and change your life. And that changed my life because I went from not just trading a five dollars, but I actually went to going bigger. So now I start making the thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand dollars a day. But it's still equivalent to a five dollars if you look at a fifty dollar or hundred dollar account. If you make twenty dollars, do you understand? So that gave me yeah, I know what you're a head start. But I was I was also there when it comes to five dollar, twenty dollar, thirty dollars a day. So yeah. But you see, you you admitted it yourself, and you said it. You you were a bit lucky, yeah, because you had some capital injection. You had knowledge prior to that. What would have happened, by the way, if you would have got that uh, injection of capital um, a year, yeah, previously or six months previously? Would you still have made money with it, or it would have been a I wouldn't account? have taken it. I wouldn't have taken it because I'm really honest. Problem. Sorry? Who says no to money, man? Come on, it's no, free no, no. money. <laughs> the thing is, is I value my friendship more than I value that 100,000. Because if I know I'm not a good trader, 
if I know I'm still learning and I make so many mistakes, I'm not going to take anyone's capital because to me it's like, you know what, why am I lying? I'm lying to myself because taking the capital will make me uncomfortable in the first place, you know? So the first thing I had to overcome is finding myself worthy of being worthy of making a lot of money. That was the first thing. I think that's a lot of pro a big problem with a lot of traders. They don't feel worthy. If you work a job that pays you, say, a thousand dollars per month or 15,000 to 20,000 rand per day, nowhere in life when you you will just start making your monthly salary per day. It, it, will, it, it won't register. So that will also be a barrier that you need to break yourself. So until I didn't become value, uh, felt, felt like I'm worthy of it, I didn't make money until I, I told myself, you know what, just step up, man. You know, we can, we, can, we can always admire, but you just need to step up. And that's what I did. And I'm, I'm grateful I did because now things are looking different. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yes, yes. You seem happy. You seem to, to know what you're doing. And I'm happy when I see traders, when I talk to traders that uh, yeah, that are doing well and they don't say really bad things about the markets. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's not the markets that, that's against you. You're the one against you. Yeah, because you're believing that guy that uh, you never met before and you see him taking a selfie in a, in a rented Ferrari, you know, and he tells you deposit money with me you're gonna buy a ferrari as well so that, that, you that's go. you can hear it <laughs> <laughs> in my complex in the state i'm staying there's a lot of uh, specialists and doctors so all of them come with their fancy cars and they always like to make a noise when they come out of the office but what i wanted to say was is that it's true that you said like trading is very i always say it's tough it's the toughest easiest money you will ever make no one, you can't use tough and easy in one sentence, but it's the toughest, easiest money because you sit, you wake up every day, you don't know what the day is old. You don't know, do, will you have your biggest day, your, your worst day, you know? Like, there was a time where for three to four months, I didn't make money, you know? And I always had to remind myself, and this is the funniest thing, like, I always had to remind myself that you're still a good trader you're still a great trader, you know? So that was the toughest thing I had to do. So what I will usually do is with all my big trading days, I'll always take screenshots. When I take good entries on a trade, I'll always take screenshots. Why do I do that? When I feel down, I can always go back to that screenshot and say, okay, if you saw such a bad trader, how could you done that? How could have you done that? You made 70,000 in one day. How, how is that possible if you're a bad trader? You withdrew over 300,000 in one month. How can you be so bad if that is what you have done so far? So I think it's always, the mind is a very powerful thing. And one of the things I always tell all my students is that work on your personal development as you work hard on the charts. Because this is not a normal industry. And I always tell to all my students, this is an industry more than 6.5 trillion USD per day. Like, if you look at Nike, over how many years, they're just at one trillion. If you look at so many other industries, if you look at your sports, all things that people make such big hype about, they don't compare when it comes to the financial market. So I always tell them, like, whenever you come here, you need to grow up immediately because it will eat you alive and it will yeah. spit you out. And you will say, you know what? No, this industry doesn't work. Because whenever people come to the industry, they come with all their financial needs. I did that myself. When I started off, I came up, I, I want to leave my job. I don't like my job. And because I hate my job, I need to do trading. I, I, I speak to people on a daily basis. What is the quickest way I can make 100000 so I can settle my debt? I'm so, unfortunately, I can't help with quick money. You know, this is a process. We're going to do everything slow. We're going to understand, get comfortable, develop a plan. And lose a few time, times, probably. Not just lose, <laughs> blow a few accounts. <laughs> Exactly. Cry a few times, regret a few times. And yeah, so it takes time. Like, I've been doing this thing for almost four years now, say four or five years, and I'm seeing a light now only. Yeah. I always tell yeah. people, you go to university, you study for four years to work for 120,000, 150,000 salary. When you graduate in the financial market as becoming a trader, I always tell people, a lot of people partake in the market. They give money to the market. There's only a few who can call themselves traders. The moment you become a trader after five years, sky's the limit. Nothing is impossible. 
because you have seen a lot of things. Not a lot of people survive. <laughs> You know, this is, this is exactly what I was selling uh, to my um, to my clients when I was an account manager. Um, they were asking me, so when am I going to uh, reach financial freedom? Since <laughs> since then, I hate this word, yeah, financial freedom. And I'm like, mate, if you can make it through the last year, uh, through the first year, then you, you might achieve it. But prepare for a year of hell you're gonna make money you're gonna lose money sometimes you're gonna lose more than you make it's it's not gonna be okay but if you make it through the first year and you learn from your mistake you're gonna you're gonna make it in the financial markets so definitely, definitely. like to me it. i left my job in december just listen to this this is actually funny i left my job in 2018 december i resigned i'm like i'm gonna go do this thing full time because the, by that time i was making 100 to hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars per week, two hundred dollars. And if I had to look at that money I make on the side, I'm like, this is almost equivalent to what I'm working for. So I'm like, you know, if I can do this part time, what can happen if I do this full time? COVID stroke, so, yeah, COVID happened in South Africa in March 2020. And at that particular time, the markets were reacting to that. And that was the first time I saw the market go into panic stage. I've never, you always hear about it. It may have happened in 2008. 2008, I didn't read. And it happened yeah. then. I couldn't react. We, the market was so, um, so many people are infected. So many, like, it was so overpowered. I, can, I don't even know what, what word to use. But the market was just dropping. And it wasn't respecting my particular way of trading. And I almost lost all my money. So, that was to me, you know what? That's why I always tell myself, you always need to be updated and you always need to evolve like the market evolves. Otherwise, you're not going to make it as a trader. Your strategy might work now, might not work tomorrow. So that's why you must always study, always back test, always see what is in the market. You know, I always could call, call it like a specialist. So when you take your, your, your car to the mechanic, you might say, my car is broken. The mechanic said, no, you need a new exhaust or maybe you need a new plug. So when you look at your strategy, you need to always update certain things to always stay ahead because otherwise you will look like, no, this thing isn't working for me anymore. But maybe your strategy is a bit outdated because now the market might give two spinning tops and the past is rejected. So there's a lot of things that, that influence it, but it's really interesting in the industry and anything is possible. I've, I, I know of people, I've seen people that's lives has been just transformed by this industry and luckily I'm one of those people as well, you know? So yeah, this life. I'm looking forward to see your, uh, your live trading when you're going to feel, uh, comfortable to start it. And whenever the markets will give you the, um, the chance as well, cause I know it, um, you can say I'm going to start trading live at five o'clock, but if the market doesn't give you the opportunity, you know, just do it for the sake of doing it. Right. Right. This was it uh, for today. It was an easy one. See, it's easier when uh, when it's two of us. It's even better when it's more of us in most uh, <laughs> in life. Right. This was it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank Let's you. hope tomorrow the market will give you uh, some uh, something to trade on. And until then, uh, if you decide to trade, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Give up. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Take care. Have a good yeah. one. This was it uh, for now. See you in a couple of hours from now. Until then, take care.